What's up Exeters? Different angle for you this time. But today we have exited off New Haven, Vermont. Here in the Evergreen Cemetery. To bring you a most unique. Okay, you look perfect when you do that. Graveside. So join us today on this adventure. <laughs> Sorry, wind was kicking it too bad, so I had to pull out the old hats here, cover these ears up. Yep. Man, because if the wind wasn't blowing, it wouldn't be that bad. We're here to see the grave of Timothy Clark Smith. And really, this is not a big cemetery compared to some of the ones we've been going to. Yeah. And it's kind of on like a really country road. <laughs> Not much traffic's coming through here at all. Nice wood lined area. It's like the woods are the boundary to keep the cemetery in. This man was like super smart. He was a surgeon. He was a physician. He was a teacher. Um, he got his degree from New York. And in 1855, he started working with the Russian army for two years, doing like medical stuff with them, and then became employed with the US and traveled around the world. Nice. But, you know, despite being that smart, and which it's not nothing to do with your intellect. I mean, people have fears all the time. I mean, this one behind, I just choked on some hair. <laughs> This one behind me scared of spiders. I wouldn't say like deathly afraid. Like you're not going to run out of the house screaming though. No. And then you I have, just don't like them. Like, um, and then you have people scared of heights, which I'm not a fan of. Like I, I don't like being up high and like having to like look over something. Um, or like closed spaces. Well... Mr. Smith was afraid of being buried alive, which was not an uncommon fear back then. A lot of people had it. Like when they would pass out, they would think they were dead. They would just like bury them alive. Because there was one instance where that I read that this lady had fallen out and they did bury her alive and her clothes were like torn to shreds where she was trying to like, I guess, dig her way out and she'd compl turn completely over. They're also bad about digging people up back then. Yeah, for vampires. whatever. Yeah, because there have been several in instances where we've read stories on, oh, this person was buried and then like they dug them back up and then buried them again or burned the body and then covered them back up or whatever. I guess it was common practice back then. That tombstone's actually broken half. Okay, so this has gotta be I'm pretty it. sure this one right here is his. It's the only one in this cemetery that's up on a mound. Well, I saw another mound over there that's like really massive mound. I didn't know if that might be it. No, I see the glass top from here. That means the steps gotta be under there. Like as I was saying, it was a common fear back then, so they come up with these things um, to put glass panes over the tops of some of the graves that would kind of show directly on the person laying there's face. That way, in case they woke up, you would be able to see them alive and help them basically and get them out. So that's what Mr. Clark did. But you he installed this glass pane that's showing directly on his face um what he did this grave that he's in is six he's buried six feet under he had the walls concreted on each side and um he was installed a breathing tube and a bell in his hand now running underneath here it's got to be that is some steps that lead down and his wife is buried 
underneath this too, but he didn't give her a window. I would still would like to know how the condensation got under there. But so there's the window and you can see the water bubbles. I tried to look down in there. I couldn't really see anything. You can see like some grass roots on the side or whatever. I wish I would have brought my flashlight. That's gonna, that right there is gonna be about as deep as you can see because it's like this side starting to get overgrown with something, even though it's supposed to be cementing in. We all know grass can grow through cement. So all you have is like this tiny little area there, but with all the condensation drops, can't really see down in there too good. <clears throat> but you can tell people left him coins and little whatnots. Okay, so, and then like she said, there's the steps. So if he was, if he was buried with a breathing tube to breathe out of and a bell, where the crap did the tube come out of? This is like really a kind of a creepy grave though, because just knowing that if that condensation wasn't there, you should be able to see down in there and possibly see his bones or something still laying there. So he actually died on Halloween. Oh, that's even more creepy. This person died at 72. This what one died one at say? 66 years. Dr. A. Smith. H. A. Smith. Well, no, but there's nothing with his name on it. Jerusha. Oh, right here. Hey, this says wife of Dr. Hey, no. H. A. Smith. Oh, here he is. Okay. Yeah. He was 64 years hey, old. He was born in Salem. Yep. Timothy C. Smith, he was a merchant. Uh, yeah, that was a part of his uh, laundry list of Born trades. at New Salem, Massachusetts, 1712, 1792. Died in Moncton, Vermont on Halloween, 1856. And he was a mason. Like, they supposedly built a lot of stuff. They, I don't want to go into the history because I don't know all of the history, so I'm not going to speak on that because I don't want somebody to come up on here in the description and start bashing on because I got something wrong. Probably, okay, so you can see right here where it's cracked and it looked like somebody tried to fill it back in with like more mortar or silicon. So I bet you because of this crack right here, I bet you. Like there you, were stairs yeah. that you could go in and then they put this on there. Yep, to close it up to keep people from going. So if, if he would have been buried alive, it probably would have taken a couple guys with some crowbars to get under here, slide this off, and then, because if you notice, this bottom section here is built into the mound itself. Only this top piece is sitting on top of the mound. It's still a very weird and unique graveside, knowing that underneath this is steps going down there where Mr. Timothy lay buried looking out the stars through his window and his bell and his breathing tube. Well, still fortunately for him, his fear never like came to be. That you they know never of. heard his bell ring, and every time they would check the window, he was still chilling there, peacefully in the afterlife. Well, if he was a vampire, then they didn't think he was a vampire. Where are you adding that into this story? <laughs> I'm just saying, you don't ever know. People up this way believed in vampires and stuff. That was only if you died with tuberculosis, you were I mean, a vamp. But you don't know. I mean. 
people up here believe that. We've done seen two graves with like bars over them to keep something in or keep something, you know, yeah, from getting out, so keep them in. You don't know. Maybe he's, uh, the window lets him know when the sun goes down and then he climbs out. You just taking the story to a whole new level. All right, well, that does it for us at this exit. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Enjoy the story and getting to see the weirdness. So until next time, we'll catch you guys down the road at the next exit. Keep it spooky. Later.